Howdy and welcome to a Bevy plugin showcase. Today we have just a short video about using eGUI with Bevy, and specifically the Bevy eGUI plugin. There isn't much that I need to teach about this plugin, but it's incredibly useful, and it's a dependency of a crate that I want to discuss with a lot more detail for an upcoming video. So first let's talk about what eGUI is. eGUI is in the same family of immediate mode GUIs as Dear I Am GUI, which you may be familiar with from C++ game development. Basically, the idea is to define UI layout in the same function as you define the behavior. The eGUI docs use the example of a button, where instead of how Bevy UI would have you create an elaborate layout ahead of time, and then in another location of your code define the functionality, with immediate mode UIs, the button is created and the creation function returns if the button is clicked or not. This has pros and cons, of course. The biggest pro for us is how quickly we can create and define buttons and UIs for development tools and debugging. This may be less useful for your actual end-user games because there are performance costs with this way of doing UI. And more importantly, it's often harder to get a nice stylized layout. eGUI does support some styling and there's an example Pomodoro timer app that achieves a nice aesthetic, but for the most part I'd recommend keeping this for development tools only. A great example of this is the World Inspector that I always recommend using with Bevy. Actually, the Inspector even re-exports Bevy eGUI, so if you're using that, you already have access to these tools in your games. So let's actually get into using eGUI. Thankfully, there's a great integration for eGUI with Bevy, and there are also some integrations as well for other Rust game engines and window libraries. To use this, we just need to add it to our TOML. I would recommend using the re-export from the inspector, however, if you're using that in your game. This will prevent you from fighting with having multiple versions of eGUI in a single project, which can sometimes get a little tricky to manage. Then, to use eGUI in your Bevy game, we just need to add the eGUI plugin. Again, the world inspector will add this for us, so if you're using that, you don't need to add the plugin yourself. Now all we need to create a window is to get the eGUI context as a mutable resource in one of our systems. If we take a minute to look at the examples provided, we see a couple of ways of using eGUI. The simple example just creates a window and prints some text in it. This is done by creating a window, which uses the builder pattern to set up the layout, and then we'll call show on it. Show needs the context and a closure, which can use a UI to create the actual contents of our window. This closure is where a bulk of the library lies. The UI struct contains all of the functionality for doing layouts and adding widgets to our GUI. The simple example just uses the label function to print some text on the window. The side panel example also achieves the same basic idea, but instead of creating a floating window, it creates panels that will be docked to the side of the screen, which may feel more like an editor that you'll use in other game engines. So now let's talk about using the library in a practical Bevy example. Here I have a basic Bevy game where some pawns spawn and then they randomly walk around the screen. I want to make a dev tool to spawn a new pawn. So let's create a system and it will use the eGUI context as well as commands and an asset server. Now we create the window and give it a title and call show. In here, I want a label to say spawn upon so I know what the button will do. Now I want the next few widgets to all appear on a single row in the GUI, so I'll call horizontal. This again takes a closure using a UI to create a layout. Everything created in this closure will appear on a single row in the layout. If you get too nested with these closures inside of closures, you can of course always use a first class function to clean up your code. Now I want to use a widget to let me specify where to spawn the pawn. eGUI has tons of built in widgets, including sliding bars, images, buttons, checkboxes, and more. All of these are in the widgets module of eGUI and implement the widget trait. For us, I want to use the drag value widget. Here, I need to give it a mutable reference to the value I want to change. This is where things get a little bit complex with Bevy, because we need to save the value between frames. This is a great use for locals in Bevy, which the Bevy Basic series on YouTube has covered in the past. Basically, this lets us define a parameter that will be local to this system and save its value between frames. Here, I just want to make a strut which can hold the spawn position and add it as a local value in our system. Now, I can pass a mutable reference to the x value of this vec2, to the drag value constructor. Then again, using the builder pattern, we can customize tons of details about how we want the drag value to function. 
I just want to step the values by 1 and clamp the values between negative 5 and 5. I'll add another of the same widget for the y values. Now I want a button to spawn the pawn. Here I just call button on the UI and give it the text I want on the button. This returns a response which lets me react to what the user does to the button. For this example, I just want to check if the button was clicked. Then if the button was clicked, I'll spawn a pawn at the location that is held by the local. This very simple demo creates an easy to use widget for me to spawn pawns in my game at specific points. I can obviously expand this into whatever tooling I need and add more details about what is spawned and the parameters on them. I can also query for pawns and display things like the average position or other things like pawns health if I want that info on screen while debugging. I could keep rambling about all the different functionality of eGUI, but the docs are shockingly well made and it's very intuitive to use. Their UI example is a feature rich example showing many different ways you can control UI elements and some of the effects that you can achieve. Overall, I just wanted to share this because it's such a powerful tool for making developer tools, and it can greatly speed up your workflow and debugging in Bevy, as well as other Rust applications and game engines. There are other crates that build upon this foundation to create even crazier tools that I want to cover in the future, but I thought it would be nice to have a standalone base eGUI video before I dive into the cool things built on top of it. As always, thank you so much to my Patreons who make all of these videos possible, and please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.